there's really no safe like Simply Safe. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I'm giving you guys a little history lesson on trends and the history of some of the most popular trends. Not actually, well, kind of. I've done a bunch of research for this video because today I really wanted to do a video on 10 trends that you see everywhere, that you see on Pinterest, magazines, designers use them here and there, but are actually like deeply rooted in history and will never go out of style. So these are great trends or styles to incorporate in your home. But all around, I wanted to shed light on 10 of the top trends I've seen probably over around the past five years and why they're here to stay slash they have historical roots. So they're always going to be just a little bit timeless. The first one I've been seeing popping up all over social media lately is lime wash and people talking about how lime wash is going out of style. It's not cool. Why do you want your walls to feel old like that? The use of lime wash actually dates back thousands of years. It's been found in Egypt. It's been found in Rome and Greece. It actually reached peak popularity during the Renaissance and then kind of started to die out in the 50s when latex and household paint started to make their way into the industry. And more recently, I feel like you've been seeing lime washes pop up, especially with the rise of social media over the past like five, six or seven years. You've been seeing the applications of lime wash, which you do have to apply with a brush. I've actually used it many times myself. And it's probably one of my favorite applications to get movement or just texture on your walls because it's the easiest. I myself have done various methods of plaster, Roman clay, different types of wall finishes and lime wash by far is is the easiest for the payoff and the look that you get. My dining room is actually fully lime washed. The color here is Portola's Bistro or Bistro color. And I just love the movement that this gives. It kind of gives your walls a very soft, almost watercolor feel to them. My personal go-to way for lime wash is just to cover everything in the room, like the ceiling, the walls. You don't want to have like a solid white, like latex paint ceiling in these lime washed walls because it just automatically can tell that there's a wall finish on. I really think you need that finish to be seamlessly done throughout the room that you're working in just to make it look like it could have been original or could have been an original finish of the space because it does add that historical charm. The second trend that we are going to be talking about is wood paneling, which I feel like is getting a rise in popularity right now. I feel like some of us that are watching might have seen this during the 60s and the 70s when wood paneling was absolutely a humongous trend for covering up plastered walls that needed repair. So it was just like an easy fix for walls that were in disrepair, they needed patched and no one wanted to do that. It was just like pop some wood paneling over it and cover up a problem. And when I moved into my previous apartment, there was actually a wood paneled room that I painted completely white because I despised wood paneling at the time. It's a really great way to add warmth to your walls. Um, wood's definitely a great natural element as well. So if you need to add some texture to a space, it's just a great base. However, it can be costly because once you get into like nice millwork on your walls, it does start costing to get the finishes and desired look that you want. And it dates back quite far. So it's a trend that's going to be coming back around every now and then. Then. This next trend we are going to be talking about is another one that I kind of feel like has popped up over social media recently, and that is the rise of arches, which as you can see, we have one right here. This is an original arched built-in, and arches were very prominent during the time period of my home, and this was actually built in 1929. It's a Spanish revival style house, and there are arches absolutely everywhere. Arches became popular during the Roman time before 8th BC, which is crazy, and then really made their way into Europe, and you can kind of see them all throughout Europe. I feel like arches to me are very European and they're all throughout my house as well, which I really love. They're original to the architecture of this home. And you also see this come back around every now and then, even in furniture and design where you start to see those rounded edges or those rounded sofas that kind of mimic the shape of an arch. That's really what it's emulating is architecture and the arches that you see um, in windows and in doorways and things like that. The wall in front of me actually used to be a completely solid wall until I created an archway in it. And that that is what connected up the two units. So I actually just took kind of the architecture and the features throughout this home and then kept them flowing in the additional doorways and openings that I added. And that's actually where I keep my Simply Safe system, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. And you want to know what's always going to be a timeless trend is the peace of mind that you and your home are always safe. And that is exactly what Simply Safe has always done for me. Over the past like four years, I've had my Simply Safe home security system. It has been just a no-brainer way to make sure that when I leave my house, everything inside stays stays intact, stays completely safe. I'm able to see things on the cameras that are inside if I need to. And if you're someone that travels a bunch or you just
just like that peace of mind in your home, Simply Safe is absolutely the home security system for you because it is such a no-brainer home security system that seamlessly blends in with your decor, which we all love. Within like an hour, I had my entire home fully set up with Simply Safe. Every single door and every window was completely alarmed up with sensors and cameras for absolutely every corner of your house, including smoke detectors, entry alarms, HD cameras for both indoor and outdoor. There's just absolutely everything to make sure that your home is fully 360 protected. And now that I'm a homeowner, I definitely like to keep an eye on my property or my house when I'm away, so I love being able to check on the camera. I can also see Winston on there. And with Simply Safe's exclusive 24-7 Live Guard protection and smart alarm indoor cameras, you can actually have a Simply Safe expert agent act within five seconds of receiving an alarm signal, rapidly assessing the situation and taking immediate steps to ensure your family's safety. And thankfully, over the years, I haven't had any problems at all. However, I know that Simply Safe has my back if I do have an issue. So if you're in the market, definitely check out Simply Safe using my link. It is simplysafe.com slash alonefox to customize your own and save 20% off your security system when you tap that link. Because there's really no safe like Simply Safe. This next one I want to talk about is called color drenching. And this is one that you don't want to think about as kind of a trend, but more so as a technique. And this is a technique that has dated back quite far. It's been seen throughout ancient castles. It's also been seen throughout Monet's home in the 1880s. If you've never heard of color drenching, it's one of my favorite ways to decorate or start the basis of a room because it really does create such high impact when you use a really unique color, but it's where you paint everything the same exact color in a room from baseboards to windows trims to everything. It creates a really, really streamlined and clean look and kind of starting point, but it also really heightens the look of walls and makes spaces look larger as well. However, if you are a little scared to go full impact in a space and just go all out with the color, you can always start just on the walls or on the vertical kind of planes, and then you can do the ceiling after. Start with the walls, do all your trim, baseboards, molding, crown, whatever it is. Once you're done with all of that, get a feel for the space and then continue to paint the ceiling if you feel like you want to add even more intensity or leave it as is, which is still considered color drenching. It's just not like full on color drenching. Here's a trend that I really have never used too much of. And I feel like when I entered into interior design, this was just so overly talked about and overdone that I just never did it. And that was shiplap. However, I can totally appreciate it. And I still would use shiplap to this day in the back of like built-ins or bookcases or cabinetry. I feel like there's always a time and place for shiplap because it actually does date back all the way to Viking times, 1700 years ago. And you can find it a lot on old ships. Shiplap is kind of where that term actually referred to. The planks of the tongue and groove on the ship would connect and that would create like a really strong joint. And they called that shiplap. It'd keep the water out of the ship. So people started doing it on their walls as well. Shiplap was fully like utilitarian and actually completely covered before. But then as people started to unveil it and take it off, people liked the texture of it. Kind of similar to exposed brick in that it was never actually supposed to be exposed until people started liking the look of it in design and that's kind of how it came to be. Horizontal shiplap I feel like has definitely kind of grown the rep for being extremely farmhousey. However, if you do it vertically, I feel like it's just a streamlined way to draw the eye up. I've also seen shiplap used on the ceiling, which I love because it's a great way to add a textural element to the ceiling. I love accent ceilings right now. That's also a big trend at the moment, but incorporating shiplap into your accent ceiling is a great way to keep more of a timeless feel to what is the trend of accent ceilings right now. Wall molding like shiplap is another great way to add like interest and texture to walls. However, this is more so done with literal molding strips. So I feel like this really resonates to French design to me. Whenever I see like French chateaus or Parisian apartments, you always see that beautiful wall molding that they do on the ceilings. A lot of that's actually original though, made out of plaster. So it dates back extremely far. And a lot of that's actually hand carved, believe it or not, it's like put up in big plaster clumps and then carved into the most intricate shapes by hand and like repeated throughout rooms and rooms throughout castles. It's absolutely incredible. During the Renaissance period, like one of our other trends that we talked about, wall moldings actually started to have a resurgence again because people really wanted the look of that ancient kind of European aesthetic and vibe. And then it trickled its way on down into the social media system where we pulled it right out of the bin and plopped it on our walls. The possibilities with molding are seriously so endless. So I love how versatile and custom wall molding is. A tile trend that we have definitely seen rise from mainly designers kind of introducing it into the scene over the past couple of years has been Zalige tile. However, Zalige is another form of tile that's actually extremely historic and dates back 10th century in Spain and Morocco. This kind of tile was actually started to be found throughout spaces and used, and it's a really, really great kind of Moroccan clay tile. And Zalige tile was actually completely plain and 
not like decorative and accent tile until around the 14th century when they started adding color to the glaze and to the finish of the tile. And I've actually used the liege tile in my home. If you guys remember back to the laundry room makeover, I used some natural liege, which is how it always was before the 14th century. And then I also used some black glazed liege as well. I did like a checkerboard mixed pattern in my laundry room for the countertop. And it created such a unique look, but I always love the look of fully liege showers or like bathtubs. It's in so many vibrant colors. So it's a great way to add high impact into a space that you use often, which is a bathroom. And I feel like since I just talked about checkerboard, let's actually dive on into checkerboard, which is a trend that we have been seeing so, so much over probably the past year and a half. I feel like you cannot go into a home decor shop or online or just like anywhere that does not have a checkerboard print lake. It really has been like the trendiest print, I feel like. But this trend is actually one of the oldest ones dating back to the Neolithic era, which is literally the Stone Age 10,000 BC. So checkerboard has been a pattern that has repeated in history forever. And I can totally see why, because it is simple. Repetitive, it's just squares repeated in an opposite pattern. And I love checkerboard. It's one of my absolute favorite patterns. Checkerboard and plaid, I just really love boxy style patterns. And those are two of my favorite that I think are completely timeless and will never go out of style. So even though checkerboard's having its super hot moment right now, it's never going to be a pattern that actually goes out of style because there's always going to be checkerboard in the world. Like it's always, always, always going to be here. If you think about it, black and white checkered floor is just extremely timeless. It dates back so far. And also like the limestone checkered flooring that was all throughout Europe. Up, you can actually still find some of it online and have it put in your home. It was a style used thousands and thousands of years ago, but it's like reincorporated in such a unique way. A trend that I feel like we've been seeing pop up more and more over the past few months has been wallpaper. When I first started out, I was a renter. I had a lot of renter friendly videos. I shared how to transform rental spaces and peel and stick wallpaper was such a great way to add high impact to walls or spaces um, without having to damage them. But that really created my initial love for wallpaper. But believe it or not, wallpaper is another super, super timeless and historic trend. Originating back to the 16th century, wallpaper was actually used more so inside of furniture and like small cabinets just to refinish the insides of them for merchants and store owners. But by the beginning of the 20th century, it was starting to be used absolutely everywhere. So starting to be put on walls, on ceilings and done in like custom ways. A lot of early wallpapers just included simple floral motifs, but then they also were done in like larger mural formats. And nowadays in interiors, you could find wallpaper in just about any type of sheen, finish, style treatment there is. They have it all the way from peel and stick, parchment paper, thin wallpaper, all the way to fabric silk lined and embroidered with gold 14 karat beads. So there is a wide range of wallpaper today. I definitely feel like it was a trend that left for a long period of time. Like from the 90s to like 2010, wallpaper was just like out of the picture. Now it's definitely made its way back into interior design. I think it's here to stay because people actually really do appreciate the qualities it adds to a room. The last and most controversially out trend at the moment, I feel like is boucle. But believe it or not, boucle has been here for a minute and boucle is actually a term derived from France and it means curled or looped. That's the texture that you see in a boucle fabric. And boucle is probably one of the most current timeless trends I'm going to be talking about because this was actually created by the fashion house Chanel who used it in the mid 19th century in their garments, um, which I totally feel like a lot of us can actually picture those boucle suits that Chanel actually came out with. It was kind of a style of tweed at the time, but now it's been done in so many different variations and the looped nature of the boucle that gives it the texture is why it's called boucle. So there's a lot of different ways you can actually create it and a lot of different finishes and materials you can actually do it in. Jackie Kennedy's iconic pink outfit was actually a pink boucle suit by Chanel. And then boucle started making its way into furniture during the mid-century era where Knoll and Saarinen started introducing the fabric into some of their designs in the 1940s. The thing about boucle that I actually love, and I'm sitting right in front of a huge boucle sofa because I'm an avid lover of boucle even now, is that it wears well, it's extremely durable, it's comfortable, and it really visually looks so beautiful. I just think that fast interior design per se, like fast fashion of interior design has overdone boucle, white boucle so much over the past couple of years. That white boucle has just become so, so, so overseen that now the only way to like properly incorporate boucle is through some sort of colorway of it. However, I definitely think that white boucle is still gonna be a timeless fabric. Like it's such a great versatile way to add 
texture to a space. I love my white boucle sofa. It's definitely going to be a texture and fabric that's here to stay, and I personally love it. And that, my friends, concludes today's history lesson. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to see any more videos like this, totally let me know in the comment section below. I had to do a lot more research for this than a traditional video, but it was actually fun. And as I was like talking about this to you guys, it was just so interesting for me to even rehear all of these elements because I feel like I'm now able to talk about them if I have a client project I'm working on. Just if I'm looking for stuff in the future, I know a little bit more about each of these. So if any of you guys have any questions or also have any timeless trends you would love to share in the comment section below, please let's have a discussion down there. And do not forget to also subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY videos every single week. We also love the trend of staying safe, of course. So make sure to use the link at the top of my description box below to head on over to Simply safe and pick up your very own home security system if you do not have one because you are going to thank me later. It's really great, you guys, I promise you, and I will catch you all in my next one. Bye!